was uh, in the Pulse era, and I worked for John Crane, as the uh, speaker introduced me. Um, I work specifically for Gas Seals uh, product development, and I'm here to talk a little bit about um, dry gas seals, um, and specifically I'll touch on uh, how we design them for high pressures. Yep. Okay, so the agenda for today, I'll tell you a little bit more about John Crane and then some introduction to dry gas seals, and then their operating principles, um, types of dry gas seals, and then specifically we'll go on to the high pressure, and I didn't do anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then specifically we'll talk a little bit about the ultra high pressure program that we have run, mm -hmm. and, and then we can take the questions at the end. Uh, I have a video to show as well in one of the slides, but because of the PC issues, maybe I'll put that to the end as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so John Crane itself. So John Crane was founded about 100 years ago now, and uh, we're world leading provider of engineered project, uh, products and services, <coughs> specifically for the energy services sector. Uh, we operate in 50 countries, we have 230 facilities, and we have two global R&D centers, um, one in the UK, one in the US, and we have about 7,000 employees and uh, about maybe 90 to 100 test rigs worldwide. Um, the first um, gas seal <coughs> itself was installed in the late 1970s, maybe 1979. And today we have over 20,000 gas seals that are currently supplied. Uh, we have over 200 million hours, uh, operating hours on, on gas seals. So we have a, about 40 years worth of gas seal experience. So this is a generic gas seal arrangement. Um, I'm not sure how many people here are aware about gas seals or what their level of competence is with gas seals, but I start from the basics. But essentially, um, gas seals um, is what we use uh, in a compressor system to seal the process gas away from the atmosphere. The process gas here is shown in yellow, and on, in blue is basically the atmospheric side. Uh, essentially, you have the shaft that rotates in a compressor, and then you have the housing that's stationary. So you have two halves. So you have this bottom half, which is all rotating. And then you have this top half here, which is all stationary. And essentially, you have this ring here, which is spinning. And this here is stationary. Um, all of this is connected to the shaft using various features and secondary sealing elements. But this here is the primary sealing. Uh, we have a radial seal here. So the gas, high pressure gas from here, um, is uh, the gas seal sees high pressure here, and here it normally sees ambient pressure. So in the 1970s, a survey was done, and it was revealed that um, the most common cause of compressor system failures was um, the oil system faults, um, because previous to gas seals, we used mechanical seals in compressor systems. And gas seals are now uh, installed um, by all the major OEMs, so GE, Siemens, Dresser, everyone uses gas seals. Um, yep. Okay. So specifically, why would you use a dry gas seal uh, compared to, let's say, another seal, uh, like perhaps a labyrinth seal? But dry gas seals have very low um, uh, uh, gas leakage. Um, we're talking anywhere between, let's say, 10 litres to maybe 300 litres, depending on, obviously, the pressure and the speed of the compressor. Uh, the groove technology, which allows the dry gas seal to work, creates a very stiff film uh, in between the rotating and the stationary component. What this allows for is any transient conditions. Um, um, it, it, it ensures that there's no contact between the faces. Um, in, in the normal operating condition, the seal is always working in a non-contacting fashion, so you have no wear on the components. Um, there's very low power consumption from the seal because, again, it's non-contacting. And um, as compared to a mechanical seal, there's no oil in the process gas. 